Hi everyone, it's Tanya here again and we're going to bring you a yummy yoga session which hopefully it's going to help you feel a little bit more energetic on the way through but we're also going to bring it into a sense of grounding so that we're working on your balance, something that's really important to work on every day because the older as we get older our balance unfortunately just isn't a natural thing that we work on so it's really important that practices like this do creep into your day even if it's just standing say for example at your sink or in the dish, dishes maybe stand on one leg so on the way through the little pointers that we give in terms of controlling your balance apply those to a certain point through your day even if it's just 10 seconds or maybe set yourself at home or a challenge uh, can you hold your balance for 30 seconds with guided wobble on each leg? So have a play with it, but certainly I hope you enjoy this session. And if you like our videos, leave us likes, comments, and um, subscribe to the channel. And hopefully we keep you moving and hopefully we keep you um, focused on mindful movement. It's really important for your body because sometimes we just don't think about what goes on. The more we do, the more we connect with ourselves and the more we can essentially figure out what our bodies need. So I hope you need this session, have fun, and we're gonna get you set up and ready. So bring yourself onto your mat if you need any pillows, yoga belts, anything that you might feel that you need, blocks to sit on, um, have them always handy within reach because sometimes just during a session they can come into to use, even yoga blocks, um, whatever you've got. Okay, keep it handy, get yourself ready, get yourself comfy. We're gonna bring you to lie down on your backs. So we're ready, we're going to bring it down, to lie down, set yourself up, get it comfy, lying down, legs maybe are long and straight or maybe they're bent, whatever you feel is more appropriate and sensible for your back, but allow yourself to rest. Be in contact with the floor, as many parts of your body as you can. Lift the body outstretched almost as long as you can make it as you lie there on your back and with the eyes heavy letting the eyelids close allowing the hands to place maybe palms up just allowing them to drift a little bit away from the body take a deep breath in and then let the breath go. Another deep breath in. And then let the breath go. I want you to draw all of your awareness inside your body. And for different people, that means different things. That might mean that you're actually trying to figure out what you feel inside your own body, inside your legs, inside your torso, inside your arms and inside your head. And for some people that maybe is, it's almost like you're taking a seat in the back of your head. Almost looking outwards from that point of exploring and looking at every part of your body. So whether for you is it more of an observation or is it more of an internal sensation when you start to bring yourself inside your body. Get a sense of how everything feels right now. Almost like you're exploring how the body feels. I don't want you to pass any judgment on what you either see or you feel. Your body is what it is. And it's just almost taking a sense of control through that awareness. Knowing that you always have your breath, it's always moving in, moving out.
and you're using the breath. Every out breath can allow you to release and relax a little bit further. Every in breath can give you a sense of energy. It's bringing all the good stuff, all the oxygen into the body, to all of your cells. And imagine that with every in breath, that there's a positive white light that comes inside the body with it. And that white light, light moves from the lungs and moves into every cell of your body. And as it does, it gives it an energy. It gives it a sense that it has vitality and that it, it wants to move, it wants to create a movement. And the out breath on the other part of that allows you to relax into that sense of being. I'm going to take one more breath here. That deep breath in and on the out breath letting it go so that the body feels relaxed like you feel open and you feel that white light has created an energy inside you ready to move very slowly allow your eyelids to open and we're going to bring you into a full stretch, bringing the arms slowly overhead. We're lengthening the legs out long and straight, stretching them away from you, almost pointing through the toes, through the balls of the feet, and then reaching through your heels to lengthen the legs. And then draw the arms back down, and as you do, bend the legs up. And as you bend them, draw the knees in for a hug. You can have them in close towards you, maybe give that little rock of the pelvis side to side. Just release the back that a little bit more. Okay. So once we've taken those few rocks, we're going to bring the arms down by your side, but leave your knees where they are. We're going to set you up into tabletop. So with the knees into that position, I want you to notice, so knees above hips, does your lower back feel like it's on the floor? I want you to get a sense that it does feel like it's lightly connected to the floor. So we're gonna slowly move from here. We're gonna take one leg out straight and then draw it back in. And then the other leg out straight and draw it back in. And each time you lengthen the leg out, you're going to touch your feet as you draw back in together. So touch the feet and then lengthen. Touch the feet and then lengthen. So knees and feet are connecting each time. So we're just going to take those five each way. So it's getting that sense of the tummy muscles switching on. And then we're going to take both feet down onto the floor. And as you bring them there, place them roughly about hip distance apart. And then take it into a pelvic tilt. So imagine that you're arching so you create that space between your lower back and the floor. And then draw the ribs in as if you're trying to flatten the low back into the floor. So just drifting from one to the other. That arch back and then that flat back position. So you feel that when you go into flat back, hopefully, that the tummy muscles are tightened in that lower section. Almost like you're trying to zip the pubic bone up towards the belly button. And that way then as that switches on, it's pulling all of those core muscles in to help secure the lower back. So lock it into position in a sense that it's like a halfway point between the two. But you do feel like there's a, a light connection between your ribs and your lower back towards the floor. So that lower tummy stays tight. Holding that in place, we're going to float the legs back up again. Around about hip distance apart with both legs this time, knees and feet apart. So we're going to take it into that same movement again, but we're going to ride a bike. So it's like you're lengthening and you're drawing circles with the legs. So it could be really small if you want to take it easier, or you could be in a really large movement if you want to try to create a more strength to the movement. But all the time, making sure that banana back or that gap between your lower back and the floor doesn't kick in. You're trying to keep a light connection. So essentially that's making sure that the, the middle band is drawing in, that core position is keeping connected. We're going to reverse the movement. 
So switching the legs, trying to ride backwards to lengthen and lift, lengthen and lift. Again, it can be a small movement or it can be a large movement. Still trying to keep that sense of that drawing to keep the back of the ribs on the floor. So hopefully we're feeling the tummy switching on. We're going to draw the knees in. You can give them a hug. Just let the core the muscles relax and everything relax. And we're not done there. So we're going to bring the legs up long and straight this time. You can have the feet together. So the legs are up long and straight. It doesn't matter if they're a little bit bent. If that feels too uncomfortable to try to straighten them completely. So you can find where that feels like you've always got that option to modify back into tabletop again. So in this position, we're going to start to lower one leg. So it might be a small movement, okay? Or you might be able to take it all the way, maybe even lightly, getting close to the floor, not quite touching. And then again, still focusing in on the lower back, on the core position. So that as you take one leg away, and if you're wanting to go with a bent leg version, that softer version is just slowly taking the thigh away from you. And this is totally focused in on trying to keep those ribs drawn in to keep that lower back lightly in contact with the floor. So you choose which version. We're only going to do one more each leg. And then again, you can draw it in for a hug. Okay. So we're going to bring it in with one more movement. Okay. So as we're taking it through this one, you have a choice. If you want to work a little bit more, you could have the legs up straight. That's the strongest position. Tabletop the next uh, position, or you can work with the legs on the floor. Okay, softest position. So what we're going to do is place the hands just onto the center of your chest and shoulders are open. I want you to imagine that you're tucking the chin down and we're going to lift the upper body and back down. So you can choose whether the legs are in that table top position or whether they're straight. And the temptation is to poke the chin out. So you try to keep the chin drawn in. Imagine that as you come up, you want to make sure you see your belly button. So you're trying to keep the chin drawn in so that you have a little focal point at the top. So again, lifting and lowering, whichever version, keeping that chin nodding in. Okay, we're going to take just two more. And once we finish from there, you can let the legs float down onto the floor, just comfortably apart, and let your head rock to the right and to the left. Just letting the head go loose. Okay. So from there, then we're going to bring you into shoulder bridge. So make sure that the heels are roughly underneath your knees with the feet about hip distance apart. And that pelvic tilt again is if you're flattening the low back, that tightening of the tummy, and then slowly rolling your spine one bone at a time up into that high bridge. And then slowly rolling the spine back down again, slowly bringing the pelvis down onto the floor. And again, that zip up, rolling it up. And as you get to the highest point, send your knees nice and long. And as you roll the spine back down again, you're finding that extra length away from you. Taking it through two more. It's a mobility movement for the spine, but it's also a switch on for the core and a switch on for the glutes. It can also help to realign the spine. So once you finish in through here, we're going to take a windscreen wiper, and that's just a gentle rock of the knees from one side to the other, just to introduce a little bit of rotation on that lower half of the body. Slowly realign the legs back into center. So you can hug onto one knee, lengthen the leg up, lift the upper body, and give a little swing and draw it up into seated. So turning it around, we're going to take you onto all fours. And as we bring you onto all fours, I want you to keep that notion of that movement with the pelvic tilt so that you're going through your, your cat cow position. So hands under shoulders, knees under hips. And then moving your tail, so curling it under and lifting it tall. Curling it under and lifting it tall. So just a few times through each. That cat 
while you position. And then find your way into midpoint. So that again, a feeling of a connection with that pubic bone pulling in. So the lower tummy is doing something. Draw the toes in underneath. Then we're going to send the right leg behind. So push the left knee into the floor. Slide the right leg behind. And then option to lift the leg. So as you're sliding it back, you're lengthening through your heel. When you lift, you're lifting from the heel. Trying to make sure that the, your bottom is doing the work. You're going to feel the weight across more so onto that right hand if it's that right leg that's working. So we're going to take it through. Maybe about 10 movements. And I want you to really focus on that length through the heel. When we get to the end of that tenth one, if you feel that you need a, a rest off the wrist, then certainly you can come off and give the wrist a bit of a circle, a bit of a shake out. But if you're happy enough, you can go straight on to your second side. So take it if you need that little bit of time just to shake out the wrists. And then you can reset, again, hands under shoulders, knees under hips, and that long spine. Toes are tucked under, send the leg behind, and choice of the lift of the leg as well. So again, this time with the left leg movement, there may be more pressure on the left hand. But I want you to imagine that you're trying to keep the body still. So you're not trying to let the body move side to side. Imagine you're trying to keep equal weight on both hands. So you're taking it through, lifting the leg as high as you feel you're able to take it to without the lower back tipping into a banana. You don't want it to bend. Really reaching through that heel, stretching long. And when you get to the end of your 10th one, take a child's pose. Let the knees go a little bit apart. Let the body sink back and the arms reach out in front. And then let the elbows relax. Let the forehead relax down if it reaches the floor. If it doesn't reach the floor, you could pop a pillow in underneath there if you need to. Take a few breaths, letting the body relax. And then slowly start to draw the body back up into that box position. So we're going to bring you from there with the toes tucked under. And we're just going to walk the legs forward, bringing them about hip distance apart. And once they're there, take the hands to the knees and find length and through your back. So we're going to allow just a few tilts of the pelvis just to bring, again, that internal awareness to the shape of what your back and your shoulders and your heel are making. And I want you to find that position where you feel like your spine is at its longest, that mid position, and that the tummy muscles are feeling engaged. Press the feet into the floor, squeeze the bottom, draw the hips forward and come up into tall standing. We're going to do a little bit of movement in terms of a balance and we're, we're kind of working into tree pose. So I want you to have the feet comfortably together, okay? And in terms of this position, we're going to have one foot turned out and you're just going to bring the heel onto the inner shin, if you like, okay? So this is first position for tree that we're going to go through. But what I want you to make sure that doesn't happen is that you collapse on the standing leg and the hip shoots out. So I want you to imagine that you're hugging it in, you're standing tall, and you're pivoting, turning out with one leg. So the toes are still on the floor. The heel is just on the inside edge. If you imagine like an inner trouser seam, you're just trying to see, can you get that level of rotation? So the toes are still on the floor. At the moment, it's not totally about your balance. So I can see a few hips sinking out. So I want you to really check in with yourself. Does it feel like you're there? Can you push down and hug that hip right in? So I don't want you to feel like you're collapsing there at all. And what is a giveaway sign, if you can see yourself in your own screen, is do you see a bit of a banana down that side? Do you feel like one side of your waist is shorter than the other? So we're trying to get that sense that you're lengthening both sides, zipping up and nice and tall. Okay, switching legs. So see what happens. So again, you can turn out through one leg. The heel is just contacting the inside seam. It's turned out. 
Again, the temptation may be one side, maybe a little bit more than the other, that hip sinking out, so hug it in. Does it feel like the sides of the waist are long? Everything's drawing in. So at the minute, you're just working more glutes and a bit of lift coming in through the core. So it's trying to keep that notion in place that again, it's a strong, solid leg. You're using those toes for balance and keeping that sense of external rotation on the other leg. Hips are pointing forwards. So when we start to develop tree pose, this is always like your starter block and then we can start to take it away from there. That's going to be your security to keep everything hugged in and keep everything nice and long. Okay, so we're going to bring you to the top of your mat. Feet can be together if you want the balance challenge or um, hip distance apart just to keep that little bit more steadiness. So bring the hands onto your chest, so bring them up towards your heart centre. Shoulders are open and connected. Take a deep breath in, reach the arms up, full stretch up. And as you bring the arms down, return to your heart centre and send the hips behind. Soften the knees and take the hands to the floor. We're going to step both feet in behind, coming into full plank position, but then drop the knees. Now in this position, we're going to take two little sneaky press ups here. Okay. I want you to imagine that your elbows are staying narrow. You don't have to go all the way down. It might just be a little movement, or maybe you're able to take a big movement. So two movements, however far you feel that you can go. And then we sneak in a third to lie down. And once we're down there, lengthen both legs out behind you. We're sneaking in some salutation A, drawing the shoulders behind, elbows lengthening in behind. And then drawing the chest up nice and tall, big deep in breath. And as you breathe out, resting back down. Take one more, roll the shoulders in behind. Lifting up, big deep in breath. As you breathe out, push the floor away, take it back into child's pose. Just modifying the sun salutation a little. And then from there, another deep in breath. As you breathe out, rise up into box. We're going to draw those toes under and we're going to walk the feet forward. As many or as few steps as you need. Again, feet together, balance challenge, feet apart, more steady. And as you come up about halfway, are you in that long back position again? Keep those hips nice and high. Can you fold at the hips and fold the body over? Let the head dangle down, let it go. A shake or a nod to let it relax. And then slowly from there, bring the hands in behind, find length and through your back. Press the heels into the floor, squeeze those glutes in, hugging them in, big reach up, in breath, and then hands to prayer on the out breath. So we're going to come into the next version of tree, okay? So you can stay with that previous version that we did. So it might be that toes are still in contact, heels on the inseam. So I don't mind which leg you start with, you can choose, okay? Once the leg is rotated out, we're the next position and it will depend if you've got socks on, socks and leggings are slipping. So for this, you might find if you're starting to take it to any of the next points, you might have to remove socks. But you can rest it on your calf. Again, it's on the inseam, trying to encourage that external rotation on the turner leg. So again, what can happen is that the hip shoots out. So hug it in, standing tall, pushing down through that leg and the core is drawing up. So we're trying to see can we get our balance in through it. And you are pushing. That turned out leg is pushing against the calf and the calf is pushing against the foot. So you're trying to squeeze the legs together. So you should feel everything hopefully in the glutes working and that tightening in the tummy, that pulling up. For now, you can use your arms as waving branches <laughs> to hold everything. <laughs> trying to be steady, okay? Release and down. So you'll know when we do these, if you're finding balance is a little bit tricky, you might not let move on to the next one. This might be your aim. Or maybe toes on the floor. Turn it out to other side. So again, rotating it outwards. You can decide whether the heel is on that lower part of the shin, toes on the floor, or does it come up onto the inner calf? Turning it out, squeezing the hips in. Imagine you're squeezing your glutes in together, that tummy tightening, everything pulling up, legs pressing in together. So hopefully we're feeling all of this is switching on and it's working all the way across and through there. Keep standing tall. Don't let that hip sink out. Waist nice and long. Still holding, still holding. <laughs> and then release. Take the feet a little bit apart. Just bring a few circles into the hips. 
Balance is one of those things that the more you do it, the better that you get at it. In yoga, we can throw some funky positions at you, so it does make it a little bit harder. But certainly just standing on one leg at a certain point through the day can be really helpful. <laughs> it can just get the internal proprioceptive system to switch on a little bit more and to figure out where balance is. Okay, so we're gonna bring you back to the mat again. So feet tied in together, balance challenger, again, about hip distance apart for a little bit more support. Hands into prayer position on the chest, shoulders are open. Take that big deep in breath, reach it up. Hands back to prayer on the out breath, send the hips back, start to fold to the floor, knees can soften. Rotate to halfway, hands maybe to the knees again, lengthen the spine. On the in-breath and on the out-breath and again folding high hips, step both legs in behind. You have an option here of taking it to full plank or maybe you want to stay with three quarters, you can choose. Again, we're going to have two little sneaky press-ups. So again, small or large, depending on how much of that talent you can add in. And once we've done two little press-ups, yeah, slowly take it down to the floor. Any version on the knees or not. Once you bring it to the floor, hands lightly in support, roll the shoulders in behind, lifting on the in-breath, long spine, out-breath, push, and fold it back into child's pose. Okay, so slowly from there, we're gonna to start to draw you forwards into box. So this is where we're gonna to start to bring in a few other standing postures, okay? So from there, bring the right leg forwards. Bring it in between the hands. So we're gonna take it up first of all from the knee. Arms coming in behind, strong press in. So we're into a, a modified crescent lunge on the knee. So we're trying to keep those hips still hugged in. They're gonna twist out to the sides and we're lifting up inside again, nice and strong, reaching tall. At any point you need more balance, hands can come down to the knee. Bringing the hands down. We're going to tuck the toes under on the back leg. Take it to runner's lunge. Now from there, the hips are sinking. The knee on the front leg and the heel on the back leg are trying to lengthen away from each other. Bend the back knee a little bit. Press in through the front leg. Can you drive it up? Either hands to the knee or hands to the ceiling. Can you find your balance? Remember, feet wide apart or more steady. Feet narrow together are much harder for balance. So we're holding, hips are hugging in, we're drawing in tall through the spine, arms relax in the sockets, but long. And as we're holding from there, we're gonna take a push off that back leg. Now you can take a little hop in so that you still have support from the toes there. And we're gonna to try to balance on that front leg, just taking a little pop of those toes off, going a little diagonal from there. And as we hold from there, imagine you're lengthening through that back leg. A little bit of all those lifts that we did, getting that glute firing up. And the core nice and strong, hips are hugged in. We're going to return that down to the floor again. So step it back, bend the back knee, tips or a bit. And once we're nice and steady there, we're going to bring the hands down to the floor. Scoop the leg in behind. And we're going to take it to the floor, so again knees or full body. Taking that option for a chaturanga in between, lifting the upper body into your version of a back bend, and then folding it back, child's pose. Take a big deep breath in. As you breathe out, coming forwards into box. So we're going to take the left leg forwards. So the left leg is through, we're coming through that same sequence. When you're ready, push that front leg into the floor, have your hands to the knee or upright. Allowing the hips to sink into the stretch, lifting the hips up, lifting the core up. And again, even notice at this point, if your feet are narrow together, it's going to be more unstable. But if they're a little bit wider apart, so if you imagine where your, your foot and your knee are, if they're quite close together, it's going to be a little bit more unstable. So take the hands down to the floor, bring those back toes under. Runner's lunge. Finding that length in the legs. Again, you can have most of the work is through the legs on this. Option to stay with the bent leg option. So when you're ready, can you bend that back knee? Can you push in through the front leg, either hands to the knees or rise it up, nice and strong. 
And as you're holding there, still that same sense of hugging the hips in. Imagine you're squeezing your, your bums together. So we're gonna take that little hop, okay? So again, you can hop the leg in, and then we're gonna to try to find that balance point on that diagonal of holding. I'm gonna be lengthening through that back leg. Hugging the hips in, same as we were standing in tree. We don't want that left hip to sag out to the side. We're gonna hug it in. And as you're holding from there, we're gonna slowly set it back. And as we set it back, absorbing through the knee, and then we're going to take it down, hands to the floor, bring the leg in behind, options again. We're going to take it once more through to the floor. You could either be bent knees or full, lowering it down, roll the shoulder behind, lengthen the legs and lifting. In breath. And then as you breathe out, child's pose, let it flow back. Take a few breaths here, take a pause. Maybe that's allowing the elbows to relax and the head to sink down onto the floor. We're going to take that little moment just to rest and kind of, kind of regenerate before we take it into our, our final round with the standing postures. So we're going to build a little bit on that last sequence. We're still going to come through it again, but we're going to add on your tree onto the end of it. So we're going to take three nice deep breaths. Remember on the in-breath, that energy that comes into the body, that white light that feeds every cell. And on the out-breath, relax, no unnecessary tension. In-breath, feeling that white energy filling the body. And the out-breath, releasing, taking one more. Energetic breath, out-breath, release. Slowly, when you're ready, rising up onto all fours. Again, we're going to draw that right leg forwards. Coming through that bent leg lunge, first of all, rising the arms up. So it's making that connection with the push down and the core rising up. Whatever goes down, something has to rise up. And then slowly taking the hands back down, runner's lunge. Draw those toes under on the back leg. Remember, strong connection. Push in through both legs, bend the back knee, rise the body up. Nice and strong again. We're going to take that little hop again. So hop it in, find your balance, and then try to set the balance onto that front leg. Keeping those hips squeezing in. Now we're going to draw from here. We're going to hug that left knee into your tummy. Hugging it in, trying to see, can you still keep your balance through that? You might be a little bit bent through that standing leg, but squeezing those hips into center. Now from here, we're gonna send it into tree. So that might be for you, it might be coming down with the foot onto the floor to find that position, hip hugged in, left leg turned out. Maybe your foot is on the calf. Your option for full tree, if you want to take it, is drawing the heel up as high in towards your center as you can. And you really do need to squeeze that thigh against the foot to squeeze them in there. In there. So squeezing them together, drawing it in wherever it can stay. And maybe if you've got that, you can draw the hand into prayer position. This is where you know you've got a good pair of leggings or not. I don't think mine are so good for this today. <laughs> They're starting to stretch down. <laughs> Wrong choice. <laughs> So holding whichever position you're able to get into, maybe it's back on the calf, whichever variation. So I'm hoping you're feeling a lot of muscles working in there, holding, take a little hug, and then step the foot down. Okay, so from there, we're gonna send it down slowly to the floor. We're gonna walk the feet back, your plank position, and then take your child's pose again. Let the body fold down. We're going to take three breaths again, three energetic breaths. In breath, fill with that energetic breath. Out breath, release. Taking one more. On the next in breath, you're rising up into box. And as you get there, we're going to bring that left leg forwards. So we're into that bent leg lunge. Again, strong connection, push down with the front foot, tummy muscles pulling up to lift your posture tall. Finding that balance in here. 
glutes still squeezing together. Then we're bringing the hands down, runner's lunge. Find that length through the legs. But remember when we draw up on this, you're bending the back leg, push in through the front leg, drive it up again, posture nice and tall. Everything hugging in, everything pulling up inside to help support you. We're going to take that little hop, driving it forward to find that balance point, lengthening through the leg, lengthening through the arms. Tummy muscles already, thinking nice and tight and drawing in. Can we then stabilise to give that right knee a hug, drawing it in towards you? Whether that bottom leg is a little bit bent or can you stand straighter? Hugging those hips in preparation for your tree. So again, wherever you, whoa, wherever you are, can you go straight in? Maybe you're taking that highest option. You're pressing the foot in against the thigh and the thigh into the foot. Or maybe you're taking the calf or maybe you're on the floor with the toes connecting to give you that little light sense of balance. Wherever you choose to go, Holding, lengthening, grinding down. If you feel long through both sides of the waist, use the toes on the floor. It's better to find a light connection. It can be so, so light to find that stability. You can still be as much of a turnout as you can keep, as much of a pull in as you can keep with those hips. Take that right leg in, a little hug, bring in the foot down side by side with the left. We're going to bring it down to the floor. So again, slowly sending the hips behind, slowly folding the body. Now when you take the body down, we're going to pause here, take a hold of the elbows, let the arms hang, let the body hang, give the head a gentle shake or a nod again, just to try to let the weight of the head pull the spine deeper down. Taking a couple of breaths here, letting the stomach relax. And then slowly, placing the hands down. We're going to just step you down onto the knees. We're going to bring you into a side sitting position. So it doesn't matter which way round you are, okay? So we're going to start to bring you into a little little stretch. So you've been working quite a bit of the core and you've been working quite a bit of the hips. So we're going to try to bring in a few stretches for those areas primarily just to open them up after that work. So in our side sitting position, we're going to take it into quads first of all. So into that front of the thigh. So we're going to take that leg in behind and you can either pull the heel to the bottom or you can try to send that knee further backwards. Now as you take it there, you might feel that stretch in the front line of the thigh. And depending where you need to go to, if you need to add in a little bit more, you might be thinking about rotating the foot upwards and that hip down towards the floor to bring that stretch in. And you can be light on fingertips with this, but wherever you get to, hopefully feeling that stretch in the front of the thigh. If you need to go a little bit further, you can roll your body weight up onto the other knee. The other hand just uses a bit of a steadier. But it's fine down your level of stretch. So you don't have to go to the point where you're screaming because it's so tight. It's just taking it to the point where you feel like it's enough of a pull that it's lengthening out the muscles that we have been working with. Whichever your version is. Okay. Take a few breaths. And we focus in on the out breath this time, that sense of trying to relax. When something feels like it's quite tight, the out breath can be very useful. And then slowly releasing, popping the hip back down. So again, in that side sitting position. So when you're here, if you feel like that's really uncomfortable and you're really twisted, if you have a pillow or anything nearby, you could sit on top of the pillow. The higher your hips are, the more it will make you feel like you can kind of lengthen through both sides of the waist. So from there, arms are open and we're going to take it to the sides. So whichever your front foot is, we're going to that side first. And we're taking it up and over with the arm stretch. And as you reach it over, imagine that you're pushing with this hand to open the rib cage to the ceiling and stretch. Coming back through center, take a hold of that back ankle, use it to help draw you in and lift and lengthen the other side. And then slowly transition. We're going to use the out breath for the length. 
in breath into center. All right, breath to lengthen. In breath, center, take one more. All right, breath to lengthen. In breath, over. All right, breath and lengthen. And then drawing back into center. So draw the knees in and give them a little bit of a hug and then switch it over other side. So once we take it over to the other side again, so we're taking it into the quad or the hip flexor first of all. So we're going to take that back ankle, hey towards the bottom, find your level. Then your options, either pulling the knee further behind, maybe rolling the foot upwards as you roll the hip downwards. And if you still need to go a little bit further with that, then the hips come off the floor, almost trying to square the hips to wherever you're facing. And then you can control, it's like you've got a lever there, you can control how much of a stretch that you want to put into that. And depending on how much you want the legs to work as well, like that hand definitely doesn't have to do an awful lot in that position. The legs are actively holding you. Using the out breath to help you settle in. And then slowly releasing the hips back down, settling into that side sitting position. So again, whichever the front foot is, we're taking it to that side first, lifting the arm up and over and a little push with that arm again, opening up the left side ribs. If you're stretching the left arm, the right side ribs, if you're stretching the right arm. Passing through that center point. And again, you can take a hold of the back ankle, reaching, lifting and opening up that long side. In breath and then out breath. In breath and out breath. Breathing in and exhale. Come on, inhale and exhale. Again, as we come into centre, you can draw the legs in, give them a little bit of a hug in towards you. Okay, so we're going to bring it into, seated with the legs just a little bit apart, we're going to bring you to lie down. So we're going to slowly take you down and onto the mat. And once we get you there, we're going to set up in figure of four to get into those glutes. So it doesn't matter which side you start with, but you're going to cross one leg, heel across the opposite knee. And the turnout, the same way as we did in tree a little bit, you want to get a turnout on that leg. Now maybe you stay there, or if you need to go a little bit further with the stretch, you're reaching your two hands through to take a hold. If it's the left leg that's in that figure of four, you're holding the right thigh. If it's the right leg in figure of four, you're holding the left thigh. And as you draw it in, you're trying to see, can you relax the upper body onto the floor? So hopefully this is stretching the hip on the figure of four side. And then we're going to slowly release. And as you bring the foot to the floor, still keep the figure of four leg in place because we're going to bring it into a twist. So from there, okay, if it's your right foot that's on the floor, you're going to the right. If it's the left foot on the floor, you're going to the left. So you're going to take that figure of four across. And you might find whenever you come through that that knee wants to drop. So you've always got the hand on the same side to help and give a bit of support if you need. But as you take it across, you're lengthening through that top side. And hopefully it's just bringing a little bit more of a stretch out through the outer hip there. And breathing, slowing the breathing, controlling the movement. To try to find a way to relax a little more. And take one more breath here. And then as you do, imagine you're drawing your belly button in to help draw and bring you back into centre. 
we're going to switch the legs over. So changing to the other figure four leg, a bit flexed. So you can decide, does it stay with the foot on the floor or do you reach through whatever the grounded foot is now, that's the thigh you're reaching for to draw it through. You can find the level of stretch that feels like it's appropriate in your hip. And then softly from there, we're going to ground that leg that's been hugged. And whichever the grounded foot is, that's the side you're going to. So if the left foot is grounded, you're rotating the legs to the left. If the right foot is grounded, you're rotating the legs to the right. And again, as you take it across, if you need support to help keep that knee lifted, you can always use the hand to keep it up. And as you take it over to the side, hopefully feel a little bit more of a stretch into that hip. Maybe into the waistline. And find a way of relaxing more parts of the body into the stretch. And then slowly from there, draw the belly button in towards the spine, drawing the back in. We're going to place the feet down. And from here, we're just going to take another two shoulder bridge. So slowly, just as a sense of lengthening the spine out again, rolling the pelvis up, lengthening through those knees, and then slowly rolling back down again. Finding length where you can. Slowly stretching the knees away at the top and pulling those sit bones away from the head as you come down. And once you're there, take the arms up and over. Take the legs fully out. Again, that full body stretch. Reaching along. Take a big deep in breath. And then as you breathe out, floating the arms back down. And we're going to bring in just one more stretch in terms of the, the hips. So you can bend the legs up again, placing them onto the floor. And we're going to cross one leg on top of the other. So it's not figure four. We're going to cross them tightly as if you're sitting cross-legged on a seat. And then you're going to try to hug the legs in from there. Now, if it feels like that isn't enough of a stretch in through there, then you have that option of taking the legs a little bit across the body or maybe even thinking about arching the back as you hug the knee in close. The more you hug it in and press it to the opposite shoulder, the more you lengthen the spine, you may feel it a little bit deeper. Take so just three or four breaths here. And then slowly changing the legs straight over. Crossing the other one on top and hugging the legs in again. As you set the position up this time again, just notice does it feel like you're able to draw the knee a little bit to the opposite shoulder or maybe that sense of lengthening through the low back. After around three or four breaths, we're going to release the legs down. I'm going to place you in for your Shavasana, that relaxation. So if you feel like you need your body to move in any way before you set yourself up, if you feel like there's a, another stretch or another position that you need to make before you can kind of settle yourself, then you can take that now. If you prefer to lie with the legs bent, that's always an option. Allow the body to connect to the floor. 
from the other. Rise again, down and tapping. And eyelids closing. Again, starting to divert your attention inside the body. Noticing whether again there's anything different now in your body as you've finished all your movements, all of your mindful movement. Maybe you can visualize or maybe it's a sensation. As you're inspecting internally what you feel or what you see inside your body, allow the breath to deepen. Allowing the in breath now to form rather than the white energetic breath. It's a nutritional breath. As you breathe in, it's feeding every cell in your body. And the out breath is your priority for the relaxation and the release. everything down. Noticing if you're able to allow the body to relax that last few moments any deeper into the mat. slowly now we're going to take one final deep breath filling every space in the body feeding every cell and let the breath go you might take one more deep breath in and let it go slowly starting to bend one leg in and then the other And you can slowly start to open up the eyes and in your own time you can bring yourself onto your side. And just take that little moment, just another little rest point before you invite more movement. And then as you're ready, using the top hand to press down, reaching your top leg away and drawing yourself up into a comfortable seat. Wherever that is for you, bringing your hands onto your heart center. So it's knowing that you've moved a lot. Maybe we had a few wavy moments, but we've moved a lot. You've challenged your balance and hopefully it has cued a number of things to switch on. You've worked hard. So for that, thank you. And I hope you feel better for it. Namaste.